I'm starting to wonder if these are back in reach. Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a beautiful evening here in Scottsdale, Arizona with none other than a Lexus LFA, one of my all-time dream cars. And today we're here with my friend Cody and we're about to take this out for a drive thanks to the owner, Tyler of Phoenix, to talk a bit more about it. I make no secret that I love these things and well, maybe, maybe. Let's go find out. We're here at the Scottsdale Air Park with this stunning Sunset Orange LFA for a drive at sunset. But I've been lucky to drive a few of these before and I've always spoken, especially in recent years, about how crazy the values had gone and therefore how they had completely gone out of reach for me. But over the last few days, I've been at the Barrett Jackson auction here in Scottsdale, Arizona, and a couple of LFAs have crossed the block. And they've perhaps started to become a little bit more within reach. And that's what I'd like to talk about today. I make no secret that I absolutely love this thing. A technology tour de force from Toyota under the Lexus badge. And to date, I've been lucky to drive five of them. This is going to be number six. Now, my first drive was about 10 years ago, a yellow car out in Torrance, California with Lexus HQ, a car that I think basically was used as a prototype doing tons of miles, and I enjoyed it a lot. A few years later, I caught up with my friend Passin and drove his white LFA Nürburgring edition, the even rarer, more focused version, and we'll touch on the values of those later. Then about four years ago, out in Germany, drove a red car with FL Motors and with more experience under my belt of supercars it got even more cemented as a car on my dream wish list. After that with my friend 458 Destroyer out in the US on some amazing roads and the values were starting to go very high and the most recent one I drove was a particularly stunning green example in Miami and I talked about how Basically, values had appreciated too far. A standard car was now a million dollars, LFA Nürburgring editions, two million dollars, and for me, that wouldn't work. But things might be changing. We have got to have a very quick walk around of this special car, but I have the key for it right here, and we're about to get this started in a moment and go and drive in the Lexus LFA. It is hard to believe that the original concept actually launched all the way back in 2005. The production car arrived in 2009. It's a 15 year old car, but it still looks stunning. It stands for the LF series with the A for Apex because it was designed to be driven on track. The regular car as we have it here, in fact, was extensively tested at the Nürburgring Nordschleife, doing a lap time of seven minutes and 24 seconds before the Nürburgring edition followed, of which there are just over 60 cars out of the 500 in total, doing a lap time 10 seconds faster of seven minutes and 14. Now, compared to the latest generation of supercars, it doesn't have a dual clutch gearbox, it has an automated manual, which we'll talk about, but it has a glorious engine up front. Let's pop this open and take a quick look at what we have there. The 4.8 litre naturally aspirated V10. Come round, because this makes the most phenomenal sound. 560 horsepower, 480 newton meters of glorious Yamaha tuned exhaust note inside the car. And of course, sitting proudly there. This really was Toyota saying, hey, this is what we can make under the flagship Lexus brand. I love that even this opening is to do with the cooling through towards the engine. Come round all of the different intakes and cooling areas. There's an active wing that raises up out of the back as well. It looks stunning. The triple exhaust tailpipe that you have back there also. Everything about it just ticks so many boxes. But before we do fire it up, let's grab Cody, have a quick chat about this particular car and get ready to go out onto the road. The man himself, Cody, how's it going? How are you? Very good, very excited. You're a man who knows a thing or two about this car. I've done some miles in it, yeah, a couple. You've been to some vents, taken out some places? Yeah, it's been at Monterey Car Week, California a couple times, uh, auction week down here. Definitely a great car though, for sure. Basically, the owner is a legend. Uh, the best. The best, the absolute best, yeah. who allows you to take it every now and then, and today is allowing us to take it out. And it's a car that has been driven. It's yes. got some miles, which yep. I always absolutely respect because there's kind of nothing worse than garage queens. Yeah, at all. When it comes to cars like this, all of us enthusiasts want to see them out on the road. The light is going fast, looking at the shadows moving. Should we get it fired up? 
Should we go for a drive? I've actually got the key right now. Let me give you the key. Thank you. You get it started. Okay. Let's take a listen to this V10. Get out on the road and get ready to go have some fun. That is the sweetest of sweet symphonies. Doesn't it just sound mega? It's one of the best sounding cars ever made. I don't, there's some people that think it's not and there's some people that think it is, but people it is truly one of the best sounding cars on the planet. Anybody who thinks it's not, is just wrong. They haven't had any time with it. Yeah, at all. They're, just, they're just absolutely wrong. I mean, airbag, seat belts. The whole line. Way ahead of its time. Um, all right, let's grab some cameras. Let's go drive. Let's do it. It's LFA time. It is LFA time. Let's do this. You're going straight into sport mode, yep. obviously. Always, I never drive in auto. Yeah. It is not the most fun to drive in auto. So remind me, when you pop this into sport, it goes into manual by default? Yep, you have manual to by separately. default, correct. Okay, done, easy yep. peasy. Because the gearbox is a big topic of conversation. Yes, 100%. Go on then, pull, pull away in. All right, we'll discuss that one because you have to think of it like a manual car. 100%. Which people get wrong, they think of it as an auto. And then like the 177 and the early F1 Ferraris and the Sport Shift Astons. Yep. All my days. That is heaven. And that's not even getting on it at all. No, that's just at the bottom end of the rev range. It revs at 9,000 RPM. The story goes that the reason they gave it the digital speedometer is because it revs up so fast that an analog needle couldn't keep up. Which I believe yeah. fully. <laughs> the way this thing drives. Honestly, if you drive it well, yeah. it's not that awful of a driving car. Like most people are like, oh, single clutch, gross. But it's really not bad. Yeah, it's unreal. Every that is time. Unreal. Every time I drive this car, I love it. Every single time. It's funny thinking back because when the LFA launched, I think it was about three hundred and fifty thousand US dollars. Yep. And they struggled to sell them. They couldn't they were like sell cars them. sitting around. Yeah. Like there were all sorts of VIP kind of inviting people out to go and drive them and stuff to yeah. try and make the sales. But you could buy cars off dealer lots here and pretty much anywhere in the world, actually. Up until pretty recently, there was a few new ones. Like yeah, a were. couple of years back, there was a few new cars where you could still get them from the dealership. It's true. It's true. But then. We go back about, I'm gonna say around four or five years, and prices started creeping up, right? They started getting to like yeah. 500,000, 600,000. Yep. And then basically after the, I'm gonna say chaos of the pandemic, prices for LFAs went very quickly north of a million dollars. To the moon, really? Yeah. Like These and Carrera GTs and a few like select cars just absolutely took off in terms of pricing. And it was at that point when I was basically like, that ship has sailed. Because I've always had it on my- <laughs> See ya. Yeah, literally, literally a see ya example. Because I've always, I've always been, I don't know about you, but I've always been very fixed on my favorite cars. Like yep. my ultimate dream car is a Ferrari F50. Behind that is a Porsche Carrera GT. And behind that was the SLS Black Series. Yeah. And I bought one of those, so tick. So that one's, that one's in, the, uh, in the collection. And in its place has come the LFA. But when they became a million dollars and you remember the time when they couldn't sell them for 350,000. Yeah, that's all you think about. It's all you think about. Yeah. You're paying triple what it used to cost. And we can talk inflation or whatever because of the ages of the cars now. That is now yeah. a factor, so it's not quite the same. But still, triple the money for effectively the same thing you could have bought back then. And I remember being offered an LFA for just north of 200,000 euros which is mad. Yeah. Obviously a car that at the time had already done a few thousand kilometers, whatever, around Europe. So for me, it was like, yeah, that's that's gone. It just can't happen. But we've obviously been at the auctions this week. I know, it was, was kind of, in my eyes, it's a little weird. Like, especially like watching auctions often and seeing where cars are going. Like, I kind of feel like they were a steal. There was- Like both cars were a steal. There was a car, well, firstly, the LFA Nürburgring edition that went through, through the block at Barrett-Jackson auction out here was big money. That yeah, was one a, six. That's... Yeah, it, it hit the hammer at 1.5 million US dollars. That's 1.65, including taxes, uh, or including the premium, I should say. So 1.65 million dollars for an LFA Nürburgring edition is still very big money. Yeah, that's high but there money. Was, there was a basically delivery mileage red car with only 188 miles on it. Yep that sold for 625, yep. which is 687 and a half, including the premium. And that's interesting, because if that's a low mileage car, 
maybe it means I can find one. There might there might be one <laughs> in the horizon for you. My thing with, my thing with all these cars is it's crazy yeah. to think like obviously red is like if I'm not mistaken I think red is one of the more common colors it for is, the car. Is, yeah. um, over the chrome wheels. That car had a great interior. I think that car was a steal. Yeah. Um, and it's just one of those things where, like, we talked about it a little bit, where cars with miles are starting to creep up in price as well. Yeah, because, because more we, people are starting to want cars that work. They work. So it's, it's a factual thing. The more a car is driven, the more reliable it's going to be. The more services, the better the car yes. drives. Like, like I, I would be very reluctant to buy a low mileage car to then drive. Yeah. Like, okay, yes, you could say you kind of get the new car experience, but you also will just have like seals that have gone. Yeah. Electronic crap. Problems you don't want. Yes. Absolute disaster. And let's be real, cars under 20,000 miles still feel like new cars. I mean, most this still of the time. Feels like, a complete, like, the thing is, a car that's been well looked after like this, right? All the leathers yep. look smart. All the trims are, in, are, are nice. There's no crazy noises or, or weird nope. stuff. A car that's looked after in proper shape will last, especially new cars. 100%. New cars are becoming so bulletproof. And what I love the most is that. I'm kind of giving a monologue, but we're having the conversation. Yeah. And all meanwhile, we've got 10 cylinders wailing away behind us. Yeah, the whole time. And it sounds amazing at low RPM, and it sounds even better at high RPM. <laughs> Sunglasses go straight off the head. <laughs> it's torquey. Not a lot of people know, but it is yeah. a torquey car. It's not the fastest car ever made, but no. for its time, it's a, it's a blast to drive. I like, think that's one of the things, though. You have to think about it for its time. I was just saying that it was introduced, the concept, 20 years ago. Which is crazy. Yeah. Because I don't ever look at this car and think, wow, that's 20 years old, ever. No. And the like, production spec, 15 years ago. Which is crazy to like, me. It's, it's, it does not look like a, a decade and a half old car. They did a good job with the design of the yeah. vehicle. Like, honestly, I think... I do think these are, these will go back up to that million dollar, maybe yeah. plus range eventually. It will do. Not a lot sure. of people understand that this car is so. This car is more rare than your 918. This car is more rare than your LaFerrari. Like this is a rare car. For sure. And people don't understand the, just how special it is having. There's two supercars that ever come out of Japan, and this is one of them. Yeah, it's not like Lexus are making regular regular supercars. You know what I'm saying? It's like. And it's arguably one of the best V10s ever made. This and the Carrera yeah. GT are up for no debate, the two best V10s ever made. Yep. I think it's one of the things, this isn't necessarily the loudest car in the world. No, it's pretty quiet actually. But it's the, the tone pitch. of it, yep. the pitch, the sound, the noise is like a symphony. It is like a like an orchestra of noise. There are all these different levels going on. Yeah, all of that, oh. basically. <laughs> I love the shifts. It's not necessarily instant. No. The six-speed auto bot automated yeah. manual, right? It takes a second just to or a moment just to go. But it's still quicker than you can do it yourself. And it's also crazy too how smart this car is and the gearbox is. Yeah. Um, like it knows when it needs to shift harder or softer or be more comfortable. It's kind of crazy to think about out of a Toyota. Yeah, it works it all out. But they, they engineered it to the max, right? It took a while. Well, from concept to production, four years, right? They did everything they possibly could have to this car. To make it like this. It's hard not to smile in this car. It's mad, it's so cool. Pulling into the spot to switch seats. This is exactly where we pulled in with the GT Black Series. We have been here before, correct. With this car a year ago. That was this week last year. That's so crazy to think about. Time flies. It really does. Like but this is, you know, coming from the UK perspective, we're surrounded by cacti. Like this is not a normal <laughs> at all <laughs> place to be driving a car like this. I've been out to drive a few different cars in this area and it's so nice at this time of year. Warm, sunny, late sunset. It'd be pitch black in the UK by now. I mean, ignoring the time difference, obviously, but even just at this time of night, I think other people are out shooting cars as well. Yeah, there's a GT4 <laughs> RS, there's a bunch of things. This is like the go-to spot, there's literally a full car park and everyone's like, what are you doing? <laughs> there's oh. a bunch of people here right now. Perfect time of day for it. All right, so, gonna swap seats. We are gonna swap seats right here. Oh, blinded, blinded. Yeah, sorry. No, it's okay, I'm not complaining. I love it. Oh. All right. All right. So, let's do this. It is well and truly sunset time, but I quite like that sound, the electronic park brake. Yeah, you know when it's off. Here we go, LFA time. And 
we've been talking a bit about the market kind of softening and I have definitely worn the brunt of that with selling my McLaren Senna recently, but this is still a very valuable, very special car. Definitely a car you also need to treat with some respect. This thing uh, is fun to drive, especially with all the torque. So, out we go. And you know, even just at slow speed like this, the sound, it's absolutely mega. It sounds so good. And with these dips and things here, right, it's not actually that low and impractical. You think it could be probably worse than it is, but it's, it's kind of a GT. Yeah, those are like, if you bring any other car up here, you'd probably have to angle pretty hard to get through those, yeah. but this car kind of just takes it super easy. Just rides through and away you go. So, let's head out to the main road. I'm already quite excited. Here we go. The road is open for us. Just build into the revs. I love this interaction. Oh, the sound. It's so immense. This car sounds amazing. It's so good. It's, it's something I've been likening recently to almost looking at manuals before. This small era and period of automated manuals. There weren't loads of cars like this, but you do need to drive it like a manual. You do need to be thinking which gear are you in. It just makes it a better experience than trying to put yep. it in auto. These shifts. You can just gently go up through the revs. And the downshifts are so snappy, it feels amazing. There's that tiniest to wait for it, but then when it just blips it, it goes so fast into the next gear. And I love the display, and I love the fact that you can just do this and, and slide around. it across. And that's where you have all your settings. We'll get to that in a second. But now, the road is open in front of us. The shift light, you can configure that in the settings. And it rides well. It's one of the things I've always been the most impressed by with this car is the, the handling and suspension feel. Yeah. Like it's it's very similar to the SLS Black Series in this respect. Like it's clearly derived from motorsport and very dynamic focus. Yeah, it feels very tight. Nothing feels yeah. loose. For like, sure. And quite different to another of my favorite cars is the A12. Yeah. Super fast. But that's a lot softer, a lot floatier, a lot more wallowy. Very different driving experience. This is still very much a road car, still a GT car, except for the slight lack of significant luggage space. Lack of significant <laughs> luggage space? You can fit one camera bag back there. There's zero luggage space. You just have to bring someone else along with you for the ride. <laughs> Made it quite difficult for car week. Yeah, I can imagine. But what a small thing to complain about. Yeah, very small thing. It's, it's very drivable. Like, it's very comfortable here. And then, like I said, you can go in this and you can have a speed indicator and go to the rev counter, yeah, and then turn it up and have it blipping wherever you would like it to. I love this. You really like how they did it all. And it's a fast car. Top speed is over 200 miles an hour. This thing goes 202 miles per hour. It might not be the quickest off the line. I think 0 to 62 is about three and a half. Yep. But that's like the gearbox and it's 15 years old. Yeah, I was gonna say, this car is not new by any means. So to put it to new standards would be doing the car a disservice. Yeah, it does have a launch control. It does have that. <laughs> is it like some of these other automated manuals that if you do a lot of launches, you burn that clutch fast? See, Probably. I've actually never launched the car, genuinely. Really? Like, I've never launched this car once, so I couldn't really tell you. Um, but you can get the car to sound amazing without doing launches, so. Yeah. And I also don't want to be the one to find out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can just do this. <laughs> It's so good it's every time. It's absolutely amazing. It's so good. It is such a good sound. Not strictly the loudest thing in the world. Downshifts. It's so weird sitting in this side of the car. Yeah. And not having to worry about driving <laughs> or other people around me like just enjoying the car because I haven't had much time in this seat. So it's... Sit back and enjoy it. Yeah, it's cool to see someone else driving the car. Enjoy the ride. Sunset in Arizona. It is beautiful. Driving this now, visit these views, open roads. The only thing that would be better, the only thing is we just went past the Boxster, is one of the two convertibles. 
you know those like mythical yeah just even getting eyes on one of those would be unbelievable i think they're both in japan right yeah the yellow one and the white one yep. there are so wait it's 500 cars because this is a, a big thing right this car actually has a plaque it's numbered it's it's not like one or 500 you know which car it is which number it is there were a few prototypes yeah i want to say when I was doing the research, there's 510 or 511 cars total. Yeah. I'm assuming eight of which were the prototypes and then two spiders. Could have been 10 prototypes turned into, two of them turned into spiders, yeah. not 100% sure, but 510 or 511 is the number of cars. It's such a cool thing. And it's one of those cars where if you're not a real car enthusiast, you're not gonna know what it you'll is. You'll never know what it is. Like you're not gonna pull up at a gas station and run over to it like you would with a bright, colored Lamborghini or Ferrari. Well, that's one of the nice things about driving this car is I don't really have to worry about people not driving how they normally would. Because yeah. like if I'm in one of the Lamborghinis or something crazy, they're looking at it, you, you see that it's something insane. Yeah. Not many people know that they're driving next to a almost million dollar car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a crazy thing. In some ways it looks a bit like the um, LC500, although I guess that's kind of the point of the yeah. design language, right? The LC500 is supposed to pick up off the back of this being the halo. Yep. That's just literally the, the flash. This sound, even just at like, we're at three and a half thousand RPM, right? It sounds so good. And I love that all of these things they engineered in such an early day for it, even carbon fiber, the digital screen because of how fast it revs, all of that kind of stuff was like, yep. they didn't leave anything unturned. And then you punch it a bit, not exactly slow, is it? <laughs> Lightweight materials. And it's a thrill with that soundtrack. <laughs> That's amazing, actually. Just letting the revs back off. Just sounds so perfect. And then when you snap it down one more gear, oh, that's high pitched. That is just brilliant. Now, I'm gonna test this. Let me put it into normal just for a second. Yep. And is then that... it'll, to go back to auto though, you need to press the button on the outside. Okay, yeah, but I mean, there nobody wants to drive it in auto. No, you'll see in a minute. Like it will start doing weird things I don't want. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, go, we'll keep it manual. Can you do that, just pressing it? Just no. click the paddle. Ah, okay, yep. Yep. Yep, and then it holds manual. So slightly different look. You can tell the shift isn't quite as aggressive. No. Nope. It's not bad though. Yeah. Even in normal, but I can see why you hopped in and you're like, yep, we're going in sport. I like to give everybody the full feel. Soak it in, soak it in. <laughs> such a good car. Yeah. They did such a good job. And it's not like Lexus makes something like this every year. No. You know, it's not Ferrari or Lamborghini. It probably, will it ever happen again? I mean, there have been so many rumors of different things, but how, how many of these types of projects exist in the world? I mean, I imagine you can count them on a hand, yeah. like genuinely. There are quite a few similarities I see between this and the Ford GT in the way that I love the Ford GT. One, yeah. people don't necessarily know what it is. They can't really believe that it's a Ford. Two, it was kind of a Skunk Works team yep. that just decided to go and make it and try and spend years and years and years battling through every single hurdle that came up that makes it difficult. It's also a bit like, I want to say, the um, AMG One as well. Um, I mean, the AMG One has had plenty of its own stories and yeah. things along the way, but the engineering challenge to make that, to make that as a car, and stick a Formula One engine in the road, in a road car that works and drives like a Mercedes. Yep. This is a Lexus at the end of the day. You know, it's all the Lexus tech. Yeah, okay, it's out of date, but it's 15 years old, whatever. Um, it is a Lexus. It feels like a Lexus. It certainly looks like a Lexus. But to drive, it's It's so hard to explain <laughs> the way it drives, too. It's like, yeah. it's like nothing I've really ever driven before. It's really, really nice on the road. Like it's really fun mid range, yeah. mid revs. Don't get me wrong, if you hold the revs. <laughs> the gearbox also works out how aggressive you're being. Yeah, it's crazy how like, it knows that. That was quite a slow shift, even though we were higher up the yep. rev range, because I was only very gentle on the throttle. Whereas when you're more of a flat foot, the shift kind of bangs into it's the next immediate. one. Yeah, it's yeah. very like. The difference is significant, like heavy throttle. It's like Immediate a bang, shift. yeah. Yep. It's interesting how different that actually is. Oh, yeah. I'm being a bit of a hooligan, but 
sunset in Arizona. It's I mean, kind of hard not to be. <laughs> the sky is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And our smooth roads make it so much better. Yeah. You just got to watch out for all those stones and smash wind windshields. I, knock on wood, this thing's done great. Yeah. What a car. Just watching how quickly the fuel needle goes down. Yeah, it's, the fuel is so bad. <laughs> it's so bad in this car. I mean, what does it say, 9.8 miles per gallon right now? Yeah, yeah we're but I've awesome. literally, since I've been at the wheel, watched <laughs> this go down quite significantly. I'm holding the revs, you know, making the most of it, enjoying the car. It's what it's for. But um, the car was intended to do. Exactly. And like any modern car, like we were saying, the more you drive them, the better the shape they, they stay. Get. Yeah. Yep. Engines open up. They just feel like more ready to go and have some fun. Right. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Go. <laughs> I tell you what's so good though is the sound inside is so well engineered yep. that it doesn't actually get that much louder going through the tunnel because inside you have this clever, like it pipes the sound back. Yep. It's not like a speaker playing music. You can really sound. hear the car at yes. all times. Even with the windows up, like it sounds unbelievable in here. Oh, this thing is awesome. This thing is seriously awesome. I just wish more people could experience them. Yeah. It's like one of those things where it's like, nobody really knows. And the people that do rave about them. So everyone should go and buy an LFA. Everyone take should all their go friends buy out for a LFA. drive. Yes. No, actually they shouldn't because then the prices fly up again. <laughs> it's, yes. it's an awful the more, car. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody should buy one. Do the, not buy them. <laughs> the more people that fall in love with them, the higher the price is going to go. Yeah. Which, the harder it gets for me to add one to the garage. Better do it soon. Mm, yeah, well... That's the topic of conversation, right? That's the topic right now. That next car spike, whenever it happens, this car is gonna, we saw we It'll saw a million, run. million two at this point. The yeah. next car spike could be where it hits the $2 million mark and then the Nurburgrings rings are just ridiculous. Yeah, it's, cra it's actually crazy the difference between them. The, the Nurburgring is worth a million more than a regular car, effectively. Yeah, for a, a wing and a lip. That is crazy. Sadly, we're nearly back, which is gonna mean having to Hand back the keys to this thing. Oh darn. It's fine with me. I might just have to steal it from Tyler at some point down the line. Well, I say, I say steal it from Tyler. Tyler or you, I don't know who I'm stealing it from. <laughs> just, You'll call him and then come find me because that's yes. where the car is. You'll be in, in charge of it. But no, we've departed from here at Echelon Autosports, which is where we first met actually. Yep. I came by here. Yeah, a year ago, the Black Series was sitting right there in that parking spot. Yeah. Let's uh, swing this back. So the reverse is there, which is confusing. Reversing camera 15 years ago. It's such an odd, yeah, the, still better than new Hercons. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Anybody who drives a Hurricane knows that. <laughs> they do not have great visibility. And then, can I give it a cheeky blip? Absolutely. You take it a little higher. Unbelievable. <laughs> LFA. 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 Bowsers. Okay, right. Park brake. Windows up, all that jazz. Oh, kind of sad times. Getting out of the car. It's the worst part of it, every time. That was mega. That was so cool. Thank you. Yeah, for sure, anytime. We're back. That thing sounds amazing. But I tell you what, the question of the day though, is this thing coming into reach perhaps? I spoke a few years ago about this bubble. For cars like Carrera GTs going for $2 million, for cars like the LFAs at the time going for over a million, it was just too much for the car. And as they settle a little bit back more to a realistic price point, 
it's where it starts to become a little bit more of an option because for me, if I buy a car like this, I want to probably make it a little bit bespoke as I've done in the past. I've changed colors of cars, obviously, to do a ton of miles with it, to go to the Nürburgring, to drive it on the Autobahn, to have fun. I believe that's what the cars are for and to share those experiences. So it makes no sense to buy a top of the market collector grade car of something like this when you want to go out and drive it. And that will change. I think the new generation of collectors want to drive cars, aren't as worried about mileage as people used to be or the whole delivery mileage type thing because you can change a car and you can always change it back. I mean, go and find a 1950s or 60s classic that hasn't had a color change at some point. It just becomes a little bit normal once you get a bit further down the line. Every time I've driven one of these, it's been an amazing experience. Each time it gets that like excitement where many cars you can come become normalized to them after a few outings. The LFA to me is just such an icon, such a cool car with such a cool story. It will be a million dollar car again, if it isn't already. It's up and down all the time very soon. So yeah, maybe the time to bite the bullet and make it happen is somewhere down the line. We shall have to see because to do so, something would have to go. And that's always the problem. It's a difficult decision when it comes to that type of thing. I love it though. So a big thanks to Cody for joining me today. A big thanks to Tyler as well for the opportunity to take this out. What a day, what a car, but with the light quickly going down, I think we'll wrap things up there. Thank you very much for watching guys. Let me know your thoughts on the Lexus LFA. This has been really interesting to drive it again today. I love that car. It is great. That's it for now though. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Cheers.